Hello everyone, this video is going to be about how to effectively use feature caching in FME Workbench. I'll be covering what feature caching is, what scenarios you should be using it to develop your workbench, and all the different ways you can leverage feature caching to minimize time waiting for your data to load. So feature caching in FME refers to simply storing data away in order to have easy access to it when required. So in FME 2018, Safe Software really extended this functionality by introducing the ability to cache your data at the transformer level. So before the release of FME 2018, if you had feature caching enabled, you could inspect your results for each transformer after the workbench translation was complete. However, after the 2018 release, we can actually rerun our workbench for subsections and control feature caching at the transformer level. I really think this is revolutionary to the workspace development process as it can save you a ton of time when working with a lot of data. All right, so when would we want to use feature caching? If you're like myself and you may be working with millions of records in FME or you could be working with data from various web services, all of this data can sometimes take a while to load into FME. Also, if you're rerunning your data with a paid API service while you are developing your workbench, this can cost you money. So by leveraging feature caching at the transformer level, we can really save us time and potentially save us money. So let's walk through how to use feature caching in Workbench. I've already opened a Workbench which contains cities with population over 5,000 from the website geonames.org. I've also brought in a shapefile which contains province and territory boundaries. So to start, in order to enable feature caching in your Workbench, you're going to need to click the drop down on the Run button on the toolbar and ensure Enabled Feature Caching is selected. The hotkey for this function is Control F5. So immediately once I enable caching, two things in my Workbench will happen. I can now inspect feature cache of my readers and each transformer now has a run to this and run from this. When I hover over the run to this on my vertex creator, it will highlight which transformers will be executed. In this case, it will rerun my geonames file and you will notice it doesn't actually attempt to read the boundary file. If you click run from this, it will run all the transformers from this transformer and onward. You also notice that we can inspect all feature cache now after each transformer. So in my workbench, there is now a little green magnifying glass that indicates we can inspect these features. So these features will now show up in the visible preview window or you can open it in data inspector which will launch a separate window. If I change one of the parameters in my transformer, this will result in the cache for the transformer to go stale and you will notice that the magnifying glass will now become yellow instead of green now. You will have to rerun the translation if you want the cache to no longer be stale or revert your transformer parameter change which will bring you to have a green magnifying glass again. So at this point in the development of my workbench we have all the data cached up into the point on area overlayer. So in my workbench I now know which cities are located in Canada because there is a value of 1 where the city intersects my boundary. Now let's say I want to continue to develop my workflow by now isolating cities that are inside my Canadian boundaries. I'm going to add a tester and select where underscore overlap attribute is equal to 1. So this will filter out cities that are in Canada into my past port. Now if I use run to this option, it will take about a few seconds to filter them out. Now I'm going to create a 20 kilometer buffer around all my cities with my buffer transformer. So I'm going to set the buffer distance to 20, buffer units to kilometers, and accept the remaining default values and give it a run. Again, I'm going to use run to this and it's only going to take a few seconds. Now if I was rerunning it each time from the beginning without the run from this feature, it would have to run the workbench entirely, which in this case would take five times longer at this point in my workbench already. Now the workbench currently contains 50,000 records, so imagine running this workbench on millions of records. I'm sure you're seeing how this can be very helpful in reducing time when developing your workbench. Feature caching also applies to workbench templates. So what this would allow us to do is store a workspace and the data together in a file. In order to do this, click File, Save as Template, and in the Files to Add, check off Include Feature Caches. 
Then select OK. So if you go to your file directory, you will notice that the template file is very large compared to the original workbench, and that's because all the data has been cached in the file. So how is this helpful? Well, if you open up the template workbench now, and I need to continue developing my workbench, let's say add another tester and select where the overlap is equal to one, it will run almost instantaneously since it doesn't have to reread and run any of the other transformers. So I hope you found this video helpful on feature caching and see how it applies to your own workbench development. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next one. See you next time.